question. Uh, first, I'll show you the harms of this speech. And so, you know, we all kind of agree that if there are harms, we can ban this. And secondly, I will show you what will actually happen and how this proposal will be very beneficial for society. But before we get to that, let's do some rebuttal to what we previously heard. So, the biggest speakers started with saying, you know, we should humanize them, because then we realize they're human, and then we realize that every single one of them could, you know, be in the circumstances and commit these crimes. Well, you know, we know they're human. We don't think they're aliens that land on this earth from somewhere. We know that they're humans that committed these crimes. That is fine. But they still represent for us something that is extremely, extremely vile. So we want them to be symbolized as symbols of this extreme, these extreme vile actions. And that's what they stand for. Humanizing them, showing that they also have good characteristics, only diminishes the idea of what they've done. It only shows, well, you know, he killed a few people, but he also was really, really nice to the dog. So apparently he's not such a bad person. No, thank you. Then he talked about this entire thing, you know, um, it, in the post-war conflict, they haven't quite agreed yet what is right and what is wrong. Well, personally, I think that the victims of genocide and mass rape have kind of agreed that what the other side did was wrong, and they're quite happy to stand in opposition of it. And then he went on with this idea, oh, but, you know, sometimes you simply no intent, sometimes, I don't know, you just commit mass genocide, and it was not exactly what you mentioned meant to do. Well, first of all, we think this is highly speculative because what you have to do is to commit such a severe crime, there has to be some sort of intent there. But more than that, we don't always care about the intent that people, the intent that people use the symbol. No, thank you, not for this moment. The intent with which people use the symbol, as long as it still has the psychological harms, as we pointed out to you in the second proposition. As long as people are harmed by the use of the symbol and thereby excluded from the public sphere, we think this is bad, this is bad enough and this is reasonable enough to exclude symbols from being used, ladies and gentlemen. And then there was this weird thing about, you know, uh, only the losers get convicted and therefore we shouldn't do this. This is a little bit odd because the losers were still rapists and they were still still committed genocide and they still did really, really, really bad things. We actually are quite happy that they lost, ladies and gentlemen, and that we can now bring them to war or tribunals and all of that. That doesn't mean we should now suddenly allow their, their image once again to be used as a symbol. There's simply fallacy and logic there, I'm afraid. Go. So, what will happen then to this crippled loser minority or loser groups that see that it's okay that their leaders are, uh, are uh, convicted and that their leaders can't be talked about, but the other side is they are still perfectly legitimate and still perfectly legitimately uh, sanctified? First of all, we think in general, though, in this entire uh, subject, the example that you brought up of America, we don't think it's quite exactly the same since the attendant wasn't there to kill a lot of people just because of the race and that was the order. We think that it's quite significant. But what we're saying more than that, ladies and gentlemen, what we're saying more than that is that at least what we're doing is we're taking away from them the possibility to rally around the symbol, because that is what these leaders are. Indeed, they feel humiliated, and now we bring this leader that was some of one point national pride them, and now they can rally around it. We take that away from them, we think that's an excellent thing. So let me get into my summation. Because let us talk a little bit about the harms. First proposition already started with this. They showed us how this basically is a way to wait for incitement and uh, you know they they they're really taking they look for a strong leader and therefore this, this will rally them around them. But then the first proper opposition came and they said, no, no, no. But you have to understand that the dialogue here is extremely, extremely important. Ladies and gentlemen, we don't think there is any value in the dialogue here. For the very simple reason, as we pointed out to you again and again, that most people don't actually have the strong desire to find out what is true. Especially not, you know, if they've been humiliated, especially not if they have, you know, the need to get some kind of strong nationalist feeling. They're not going to try and investigate this. They will simply accept what they're being told. And that means that this idea simply gets only gets perpetuated, which we think is very bad. It once again creates this atmosphere of hatred. But more than that, and this is what we've told you, we have an, an instance of uh, psychological harm. Because basically, no, thank you, not right now. Basically, what it does, this leader symbolizes the act. This leader symbolizes what he did. You know, Hitler stands for killing six million Jews. You can't get any way around it. So this, and now this symbol is being used, once again, but in a more positive context. We think this is really, really bad, because this basically relives the trauma of all the victims. They were, what they went through this once before. They felt that they had to feel this humiliation. And now they're once again in this, in this, in confronted with the symbol that oppressed them, that murdered them, and they feel once again threatened. Go for it. Everyone agrees that Hitler was an ass, and for every voice that Hitler wasn't, there's 10,000 voices.
Lord said that he still was. What's your problem there? The problem is that, for, you know, let's say, for instance, a, 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 somebody who's Jewish and sees a neo Nazi march, he feels suppressed by this opinion. He feels he once again has to relive the trauma of being, a, being a suppressed by Nazi. We think this is really bad for the simple reason that they feel that, well, as we've told you, the, the sphere of expression is the public sphere. We want everybody to be able to express themselves in it. The moment you have one opinion which threatens someone else, which really is for another people the trauma, which makes you feel like they're threatened and suppressed, you prevent them from actually participating in them. And we think this is a very, very bad thing, ladies and gentlemen. They feel threatened. They feel like they cannot express them freely because they want to get, this is not just, you know, somebody that insulted them once upon a time. This is somebody that really harmed them, that thinks that they are wrong simply because of the race that they are. This means that they feel they cannot truly freely participate in the dialogue. It means that they are actually excluded from the public sphere. We think this is very, very, very bad. So second of all, what will happen after this proposal? Well, first of all, we say, you know, we take away a platform for them to actually spread their hatred, which is a great thing in itself. And, you know, they said, oh, but the question of the earth will only make them more radical. Well, personally, you know, they already think that one ethnic group should be, uh, should be killed just because of what they are. We think that pretty radical already. We don't think they can get more radical than that. And then they talk about, you know, what is best for society, because this is how we can walk, go towards reconciliation. How on earth does a symbol for genocide bring us closer to more reconciliation, ladies and gentlemen? It only emphasizes the hatred there was in between them. So there is no way to get into reconciliation. And more than that, and this is what we've also brought you in the second proposition, we are actually diminishing the value chain because we are attaching a price to, uh, to expressing this opinion. We're saying, you want to express it, you have to pay price. So you better make, better make them sure that this is really what you want to believe in. This is a huge disincentive for people to actually go out and do this, and therefore we believe that they will do it less, and therefore we will have a less of a passion for these extreme opinions, which we do not believe have any place in any kind of democracy. And for these reasons, we call upon you to propose.